We've all seen what a building looks like. It has walls, windows, balconies and terrace. And we also know what it's made up of. Yes, it is bricks, rocks, iron rods, etc. So let's try to make our own building. We started to pile up a few bricks. But you know what happened after a while? They all collapsed. Why do you think it happened? Maybe there's some important component which we have seemed to miss. Can you figure out? Oh, we didn't really use any cementing material. This cementing material is very important to build a structure. It binds all the other materials and helps in making the building firm and solid. So now we know that cement acts as a binding, supporting and packing material. So just like a building, there's cementing material in our body too, in the form of a special tissue which helps to bind the body together. This tissue helps to connect all the organs and parts of the body. And hence this tissue is rightly named as connective tissue. The human body is made up of four types of tissues. In our last session, we saw how important the nervous tissue is. And today we'll be dealing with the connective tissue. As we know, a tissue is made up of cells and the cells that make up this connective tissue are present in a gel-like substance called medium or matrix, which forms the main bulk of the connective tissue. Since it's a connective tissue, are you wondering in our body, what does it connect? So to answer this, let's look at the human skeleton. An adult human body has 206 bones. So what do you think? Are they all connected to each other? Yes, they are all connected with this special type of connective tissue. The tissue that connects two bones is called a ligament. But apart from just connecting bones, even muscles are adhered to the bones with another type of tissue called the tendon. And both these, that is the ligament and the tendon, are a type of connective tissue called as the dense connective tissue. Dense because the cells in this type of tissue are densely packed together with very little matrix. To protect our bones and muscles, our skin comes into the picture. The human skin is the largest organ. But ever wondered how does it just stay there? The skin is connected to our muscles with a type of a connective tissue. The cells in this tissue float in a gel-like medium which is loose and hence this tissue gets its name as an areolar or loose connective tissue. It's also present around blood vessels, nerves and in the bone marrow and to fill the space inside the organs. So mainly this type of connective tissue is used as a filler tissue. Are we all good till here? Okay. So till now we've seen how a connective tissue connects parts of our body or how it binds them together. Now let's move a step ahead and see the other functions of how the connective tissue supports our body. Our bones form the framework of our body. But did you know that these bones are also a connective type of tissue? It supports and holds our internal organs together. Like for example, the heart and lungs are supported by the bony rib cage in our chest. Our skull holds and supports our brain. It may be difficult to visualize a bone as a tissue because we've always seen a tissue like a layer or a group of cells. But the bone cells are present in a medium which has calcium and phosphorus. And due to this, a bone is strong and hard in appearance. So therefore, the bone is a type of skeletal connective tissue. But there's one more tissue in this type. Have you ever tried folding your ear lobe? It bends easily, right? 
That is because the cells here are widely spaced and the matrix is cheese-like, firm and slightly elastic. This tissue is called as a cartilage. Yes, the ear lobe, nose tip and many more such areas are made up of cartilage. A precious body needs to be safe from the mechanical shocks it might get. And to do this, there's a layer of tissue right beneath your skin which acts as a shock absorber. This special type of connective tissue is called adipose tissue. The cells here are filled with fat globules. Let's come to a fun fact. Did you know that thin people who have very little adipose tissue feel more cold compared to fat individuals? As this layer acts as an insulator. This brings us to the last type of connective tissue. We've always seen a tissue like a layer of cells or a huge pile of cells. But what if I tell you that our body has a tissue which is liquid in nature? This fluid flows through your entire body and acts as a transporter of oxygen to all the parts of the body. Can you name this fluid in our body? Yes, it's the blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue which has many cells like RBCs, WBCs and platelets suspended in a liquid medium called plasma. So here we've completed seeing all the types of connective tissue and simultaneously learned the functions of this tissue. So just how without cement the building collapsed, imagine what would happen to our body without connective tissue. Let's end this session with this intriguing thought and learn to value each and everything present in our body. We try to come up with more such fun sessions. To get updates of our next session, subscribe to our channel and share the word. Thank you.